Hey there, in this video I'm going to show you how to implement PWM in the uh, Arduino simulator AVR 8JS and this is about this uh, demo. There is a guy called Tofik from uh, Montreal, Canada and he sent me this uh, cool, cool demo that he built with the Arduino simulator. Now he uses this to teach his uh, students at the Towson College and he has like a bunch of awesome demos with a simulated robotics environment so in this one for instance uh, you need to get all the coins uh, let me run it so you can see so by default the robot goes like uh, this way and then if you change the code so uh, just uh, add some code to control the right servo and uh, increase the delay then I hope that the values are fine now, but basically now the robot should go straight and collect all the coins. And he's building, uh, he's been building a batch of, yep, it succeeded. He's been building a bunch of awesome demos and challenges, uh, teaching his students about uh, the ultrasonic sensor and uh, giving them exercises to follow the wall. And there is even like a challenge with, um, uh, actual code that they have to submit uh, as a part of their uh, homework. So this is really cool. And he reached out to me in the email and asked me um, how he could use analog write in the simulation. So basically analog write is an Arduino function that lets you uh, generate a PWM signal and you can use it to control the, bri the brightness of an LED or to um, control um, standard DC motors, so to control their uh, speed. And I think that's the reason he wanted it, because he wanted to use uh, standard DC motors like uh, those robots usually have and not servo motors, which are less common for this kind of application. And um, at that time, the simulator didn't support that function. So uh, I went ahead and implemented it for him, uh, added support for um, some specific function of the timers which is called compare match output which is used by the arduino library for pwm but we are not going to go into all these uh, tiny details uh, about the implementation rather i want to show you in this video um, how i use this how i uh, create pwm simulation a good one um, in the uh, using the simulator library. So um, let me open this uh, code and this is also the uh, demo page for the uh, simulator. So basically if you uh, git clone this AVR AGS simulator and then npm install npm start then you get this uh, nice demo project and if you want to know how it works there is another video I posted a few weeks ago which uh, builds something like this from scratch and uh, it comes with some demo code so when we run it you can see that uh, this demo code uh, blinks this uh, green simulated LED and it also prints uh, a lot of uh, blink uh, messages to the serial console so these are doing a line uh, prints here and um, what we want to do is to add another LED which will have a PWM signal. So right now uh, we use digital write, so it lets us turn the LEDs off and on, but we can't really control the brightness. And with um, analog write, we can do it. So um, in Arduino, not all of the pins can be used for PWM. Uh, I have a board here, so uh, maybe you can see it. Some of the pins have a tilt next to them, and all the, the pins that have tilt next to them uh, can be controlled by PWM. So in our case, that would be, uh, we'll go with pin 11, um, and we still don't have an LED connected to pin number 11, so let's add one. So uh, I will just add another walkway LED to the code, and let's change the color of it to, uh, let's say, blue. So um, we have another blue LED here now that is connected to pin 11. And um, we also need to make some changes to the uh, code, if I'm not wrong. So um, it will connect this uh, LED to the simulated hardware. So uh, let's do that basically just uh, copy pasting and selecting the uh, LED, the blue LED here. And then uh, I need to say that whenever we get um, 
let's copy this one. Whenever we get a new value on uh, port B, which is uh, the hardware, um, the simulated hardware that controls all these uh, pins that you can see here in yellow, this uh, 8 to uh, 13. So uh, whenever I get a new value, I just read a pin state of pin number 3. So 3 is basically, um, the, 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 the Arduino pin is actually 11, but uh, it's called uh, pin 3 on uh, port B. And you can Google like uh, Arduino pin out or look at the data sheet to find out this uh, port B pin numbers, how they correspond to Arduino pins, but uh, we are not going to uh, focus around that, about that here. And I think that's it. So um, now we should have LED 11 connected to um, this uh, pin, like this red LED connected to uh, the simulated pin PB3, which is pin 11 on Arduino. And we can change the code, just uh, let's save. So uh, the code is updated. And we can change the code to see if now uh, we can blink it. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it works. Um, and now we can start using um, the analog write functions uh, since it's already a part of the simulation. So let's do analog write 11. And then uh, let's make the brightness go higher every uh, 100 milliseconds, so uh, gradually, actually even every 20 milliseconds, so it will go faster. Uh, so brightness starts with zero, and then we can say analog write 11 brightness, and uh, brightness uh, goes up every duration of the loop. Um, and if we run this code, we can see that um, it goes sort of crazy. And the reason for that is the browser only updates the screen something like 60 times a second. And uh, we update this LED, so analog write um, turns it on and off really rapidly. That's, the, uh, that's how PWM works. And what we're, we are getting here is just like snapshots of times where the LED were either on or off. So in order to um, set the brightness of the LED correctly according to the signal generated from uh, to the signal generated from the simulation, what we actually need to do is for each frame of the browser calculate how much time the LED was uh, on and how much time it was off, like the duty cycle. And that would allow us to uh, accurately uh, present the brightness of this uh, LED. And in order to do that, we are going to use a few uh, variables. So um, instead of just uh, updating this uh, LED state every time we uh, have a new uh, value from the hardware, every time we have a new update on port B, we are actually going to update it only a few times per seconds in this execute function. And we are going to use this listener to calculate the duty cycle. So we'll do it by uh, basically we need to know uh, when was the um, last uh, value when we got it. So uh, so we need to or maybe we'll call it last state. So what was the last uh, state of this specific pin? And we'll start with um, uh, that would be uh, pin state dot input. So by default, it's input, and we need to uh, measure the time it goes high and low in order to calculate the PWM signal. And then uh, we can all also save the uh, CPU cycles, the time where the uh, state has last changes changed. So that would be uh, starting with zero and last update cycles. And we'll use that variable in a second to know how much time has passed since the last uh, update. Um, so we can calculate uh, the duty cycle correctly. Um, and now what we want to do is something like that. So if last state is different from, uh, let's say, uh, let's save this into a variable, uh, pin 11 state. So uh, pin 11 state is this. And then if 
uh, we had a state change, then we can uh, check for how long the um, LED was off and then use that as part of the calculation. So basically, uh, we need to say uh, delta equals la, um, last state cycles. So it's like the current CPU cycles. So it would be runner.cpu.cycles minus last cycles. So this is the uh, amount of time the pin stayed in the last state. And then um, we need to say, so we take this time and um, we can add it to uh, um, average uh, on time. So, uh, or maybe we can just count the uh, on cycles. So LED on cycles or LED high cycles for how many cycles it was high during the last uh, period. And we can use that uh, later to uh, calculate the brightness. So um, we take this LED high cycles. And now uh, if the uh, last state was uh, pin state dot high, we can uh, do this calculation and say uh, LED high cycles uh, is basically getting the delta. So um, how much time it was high. And then uh, otherwise, we just don't update the LED high cycles. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So now uh, we we are sort of counting how much time the or the number of cycles that the LED was high in total, and whenever we update the display in this uh, callback that we have here, so this is the callback that uh, prints this uh, simulation time here on the right. Um, you can see it here in a moment. So uh, whenever we update this text, we'll also update the brightness of the LED. So we'll do this calculation. So um, uh, cycles sense update equals to um, CPU cycles. And then um, ah, we actually get it as a parameter so we can read it from there. Minus uh, last update cycles and then we know how many cycles have passed since the last update and we can calculate the duty cycles. So first of all, let's say that the LED is always uh, on if um, we had any kind of high cycles. So if high cycles is greater than zero, if the LED was, uh, the pin was high for uh, any amount of cycles, then we set the uh, LED to on. And then we can say that the brightness so um, is it not called brightness or maybe we have uh, an older version of the uh, Wokwi element which still doesn't support this. Uh, yeah, this is a very old version. So let me just uh, upgrade uh, the Wokwi elements in this project uh, to the latest uh, Wokwi elements 0.16. So uh, the brightness was, I think, added in version uh, 0 0.3 or 4. And here we are using a very old version of Wokwi Elements, which still doesn't have this uh, property. Um, so now I'm installing the latest version. And uh, for some reason, it hasn't updated in package.json. Uh, I'll figure it out later, but it should be good enough for the demo. And now we can see that uh, we actually have this uh, brightness so led 11 dot or maybe we should uh what happened here let's try to install it again pm install minus save dev and uh once this is finished we should have this uh brightness property on the led let me see yep it's installed and now visual studio can read it and now I hope that we'll have the, uh, yeah, we have this brightness. So it sees that. And back to the context. So we have these cycles since last update. How many cycles, CPU cycles have passed since the last uh, update? And let me just restart parcel. 
so it will uh, recognize this new package. So we have this cycle sense update, how many CPU cycles have passed since the last uh, time this function was executed. And um, now we can, and we also know how many of these cycles the LED was high. So basically the uh, brightness should just be uh, updated cycle, um, how much time it was high divided by the total cycles. So cycle sense last update. So uh, basically this divided by um, this. And finally, we also need to uh, update the last update cycle. So we'll have this value in the next iteration and also um, reset the LED high cycles um, and also reset the uh, last say, cycle. So if it stays high uh, for a long time, we only like uh, count the time it stayed high in, during this duty cycle. And this is almost good. There is another thing we need to add in order to make this correct. But first of all, I see that I forgot to update the last state here. So we need to update it, obviously. And the last thing we need to add here is uh, to check whether um, the pin is high, uh, because if the pin hasn't changed um, to um, if the pin hasn't changed during this uh, update before between the previous update and this one, then uh, we won't run this code and LED update cycles won't be updated. So basically we need to, to copy this code here and say something like uh, if uh, the pin is right now, if it's high at this moment, let's also copy this uh, pin state. So if pin 11 state uh, is now high, then uh, we want to um, update LED high cycles and say it equals to um, the number of uh, the current CPU cycles minus um, the time that has passed since um, basically since the last uh, pin update. So since it was turned high or since the last update, so that was last state cycles. And I think that's it. Let's save this and reload the demo page and see if now uh, this analog write uh, demo works. I'm pretty excited. Let's hit run and see how it goes. And if not, we'll have to debug. So yeah, so it almost worked. You can see it still flickers and we'll have to, to understand why, but I can see the brightness going up and then uh, going all the way back to zero, going up and then zero. So it almost works. There is like this uh, strange flickering that happens um, and we'll have to uh, spend some time debugging this code to figure out what's going on here. So I think the first way uh, we are going to debug it um, would just be um, to set the brightness to a specific value. Let's say uh, that would be analog right, uh, pin 11, and we'll use, uh, let's say, uh, 25, which is about 10% brightness, and see what happens. So yeah, you can see like it's on for some times, but then it also flickers. Um, and uh, I think for that, let's uh, open the uh, debugger here and put some uh, breakpoints so we can see what's going on. So the, the cool thing about it is since the simulator is running in JavaScript, we can simply uh, tap into any of those files like index.ts and uh, so not this one, the index.ts of the uh, demo. Is that this one? Yep. Uh, we can tap to any of those files and just uh, set up some breakpoints. So um, in this case, we have, um, let me see, LED 11. That's where we calculate the brightness. And if we press on run, if we click run, we can see what happens here. So uh, basically now it's only the start of the simulation. So maybe this line even didn't run yet. Uh, so we'll uh, let it run for a moment and then we can uh, place this breakpoint again. And we can see that in this case, the LED high cycles was zero and the cycle since uh, last update was 
uh, 5000, which is pretty big. Um, so uh, let's see what's going on. Why didn't, uh, what is the current pin state? So current pin state is zero, which is uh, zero is basically it's slow. So it's currently low in this update. Let's run it again and see what happens here. So it's still low, interesting. Um, so uh, it doesn't seem to go high. And let's see if it's updated here, if like the uh, code writes there. So yeah, it seems like there is an update and it's, upda it's updated to high. And this should be true, right? And then we calculate a delta and the delta is positive. And then this should be true probably. Oh yeah, I can see the code. I compare uh, last state cycles to pin state high instead of comparing uh, the actual state. So that's a silly bug. Let's fix that. And thank you. Thank you so much debugger for um, making me aware of this uh, issue. So we can close the debugger and we can uh, fix the bug. By the way, if you notice this while I wrote this line of code and kudos to you, you are very sharp. Let's save and let's try running it again. Uh, I will, I'm a believer. So I will just um, comment out this uh, test code and go with the actual code and let's see if that works. Run and Hmm, interesting. It seems like the LED is now uh, pretty much con constantly on. There is no uh, analog output. So let's go back to this uh, debugging line and see what's going on here. Yep, it seems like uh, there is probably another bug. So going back to the debugger and let's uh, also set a breakpoint here where we uh, do all these calculations. And let me see what's going on here. Let's make the text a little bit larger here. And we can uh, remove this pane. We no, no longer need it right now. Um, even larger for you. And then uh, let's see what's going on. So we had uh, half a million cycles since the last update. And then uh, the current state is zero, which is fine. And we had uh, this number of high cycles, which is pretty big. Interesting. Hmm. Yep. Um, and then, uh, so this number is too big. It seems like uh, we have some problem and uh, I can see that we reset this number. So it probably is something, uh, we add too much to the LED high cycles. And so the problem is probably here. So we add it. So we add the Delta and the Delta is current cycles minus last state cycles. Oh, but we don't update last state cycles. So let's fix that as well. So last state cycles, just uh, runner dot CPU dot cycles. So basically we accumulated the, uh, instead of like counting the times that, um, this pin was high, we actually uh, summed those times, uh, but uh, like our baseline wa wasn't updated. So it just increased uh, and went over uh, the 100 brightness. So that's what why we were seeing this uh, LED full brightness, even though we had a duty cycle. And after we fixed that, let's try that again and see how it works. So running this again and uh, hmm, interesting. It seems like it sort of works. Um, it goes, I think it goes like the other way. It goes uh, from very bright to not bright. Let's try this uh, with a specific value. So um, yeah, this is definitely not uh, one cent of the brightness. So another time, uh, let's go back to the simulator, uh, to the debugger. Let's run the simulation. And uh, here we go. We can see that we have this uh, runner state and then uh, what's up 
this is the high cycles so hmm, interesting so uh, it's pretty big even though uh, it probably shouldn't be let's see what's going on here so the brightness is 0 0.9 interesting and then we have CPU dot cycles so Okay, let's run it another iteration and see what happens. So yeah, it's it seems to be kind of reversed. Interesting. So it seems like, uh, well, yeah, I can see the bug here now. So um, the problem is uh, we are um, comparing the current pin state to high. So basically we are um, checking what is the current pin state, but uh, this delta is actually, it relates to the previous pin state. So we are now changing it to high. So, but we counted uh, the time, the cycles that happens before. So we counted the cycles of the previous state. So instead of checking if the current state is high, we need to check if the previous state was high because we want to kind of the cycles that it was high. So if the previous state was uh, high, then all the cycles that happened before happened while this pin was high. So um, let's fix that. We basically need to compare it to uh, last state instead of the current state. And uh, we'll continue with this uh, optimistic uh, outlook and uh, um, assume that it's going to work out of the box right now with all these uh, fixes that we did. Ready, set, run. And yeah, I think it's working. It's going slowly, slowly, going more and more brighter. So yeah, basically this is it. About uh, one screen of code, um, a simple state machine that uses four variables to uh, keep track of um, the duty cycle of the LED and represent this uh, PWM signal generated by analog write very accurately. Um, and uh, you can see that it it is working. It, it, it took some time. It was uh, like half an hour uh, making this work, uh, but we did it. And I hope that you learned something new and uh, like, I, I think we should all learn from uh, Taufik and uh, do this like super cool things with the simulation. I really love to see where you guys are, you guys and Garrus are um, taking this and uh, what other kind of cool stuff you are going to create with this simulation. And until the next time, bye bye.